how's everyone doing? Great. Good, 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 good. Hey, Scott and Becky, you're back. Good to see them. Yeah. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Uh, someone, uh, um, Norma, Norma, what, what's going on with you? You can say something here, Norma. She's got that. She's got that walker, but she doesn't need it. She just pushes it around, pushes it around. Hey, continue to pray for uh, for Ron. Not not Ron Kanabe. Well, pray for him too. Ron Kanabe selling his house, so hopefully everything goes smooth there. Uh, and Ron uh, Matthews is still fighting that uh, ankle thing. That's a that's a big deal. And so hopefully in a couple of weeks we'll see him. And Ron, if you're watching. Hang in there, buddy. Just know we're all thinking about you. Are we there? Okay, there we go. Must be watching. Must be watching. Turned it off. <laughs> hey, so Gene is going to come up and do a, a special song for us right now. Before we do that, why don't we, why don't we say a, a word of prayer? Yes, Let's pray. Well, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day, for this time together. Lord, we pray that whatever happens in this service would be pleasing to your sight. And so, Lord... We just pray for your direction, for your peace. And Lord, we know that you're in control of all things. And so, Father, thank you now for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Why me, Lord? You guys know this song.
from we go from praising God because he makes a way to asking him to open the eyes of our hearts because that's what we want right every day we want to see God in our lives sing this song with us oh yeah Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Lift it up, let me hear you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Shining in the 
Somebody say welcome. Glad you're with us at Preston Valley Bible Church. Give someone a hug. God is good all the time, right? God is good all Amen. the time. Right, Ron? I gotta we gotta break everybody up here. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God, God is good, good. Yes, yes. All, all the time, through the, the darkest night, His light, light will shine, God, God is good, God, God is good. Get ready, 
all the time. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. If you're walking through the valley, there are shadows all around. Do not fear, He will guide you, He will keep you safe and sound. He has promised to never leave you, nor forsake you, and His word is true. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. We were sinners and so unworthy. Still for us, He chose to die. He fills us with his Holy Spirit, now we can stand and testify that His love is everlasting and His mercy. They will never end. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time through the darkest night. His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. Yes, he is. Though I may not understand all the plans you have for me, my life is in your hands. And through the eyes of faith, I can clearly see God is good all the time. Put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. Uh oh. Everybody. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good. God is good. He's so good. God is good. He's so good all the time. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Where's the oxygen when you need it? Amen. Well, we're here to remember the things that Jesus did for us. That's why we're here. Uh, Everything that we do is to remember what he did, what he said, uh, and try and follow into his footsteps. Uh, you know, he says, <clears throat> remember not only what we're going to partake, remember everything that I said, everything that I did. And the way you do that is to read your Bible. Uh, so <clears throat> the, <clears throat> the juice is his blood, the bread is his body. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for allowing us to partake of this. We want to thank you for giving and us your son. And we say these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. to rejoice. Time to give back to the Lord. The Lord loves a happy giver. The Lord knows what we can do and what we can't do. Uh, you know, I, I look back and every time that uh, uh, Sue and I had a crisis coming on financially, uh, we just gave a little bit more to the Lord and that crisis was taken care of and it, and uh, uh, you know it comes from places that you don't even uh, think that it would come from uh, so the Lord knows what you need uh, but the Lord knows what you can do uh, so when it comes around give from the heart let us pray Heavenly Father we want to thank you for allowing us to uh, give back to you some of the many, many miracles that you have given to us. And all God's children said, Amen.
comes up with me Hey, so today was a, today was a, first of all, congratulations to everybody. We pulled the shift here because Valerie's out of town, Mike is out of town, Scott is out of town, and so, or Dave is out of town, and it's like, okay, all right, Lord, make this happen, baby. And, 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 and so I have this stuff out for our message. It's going to be part of the message. Don't pay attention to the fruit and the vegetables. Don't pay attention to that. Uh, I think the biggest problem I had this morning was trying to make sure nobody ate any of the fruit. Any of the fruit. Huh? Yeah, I know. No, we're good. We're good so far. We're good so far. Hey, welcome to Prescott Valley Bible Church. Open your Bibles this morning to Deuteronomy chapter 14. Deuteronomy chapter 14. We are in the last message of this series titled, In God We Trust. And in this series today, we're talking about the grace of giving, the grace of giving. We asked a question last week that was pretty interesting, uh, and the, the, the question was, can we trust God? Can we trust God to, to deliver for us what we need to be able to give to every good thing, to be able to, to do whatever he's calling us to do? And the answer, of course, is yes to that. Can we trust God that he's going to give us what we need to be able to do what he wants us to do? Of course. He wants our time, he wants our talents, and he wants our treasures. That's what this series is, has been about. So for those of you who have been watching and have been sticking with us through this, sometimes people don't like it because they hear about, oh, it's giving, so it's going to be icky, you know, that kind of thing. But I don't think this was too icky, was it? It wasn't too bad, right, for you guys? It's, it's good. It's good. Because God wants us to understand that he owns everything. He's the one that owns everything. You and I, as we've been saying in this series, are merely stewards. We are the managers of what God has entrusted us with. And the more I thought about that as I was starting today's message, I thought about it and I thought, you know, even our breath, God is the owner of our breath. He, he creates the air that we breathe. He's, he's, he's everything. He's everything. Deuteronomy 8.18 says this. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so his covenant which he swores to your ancestors as it is today so now the question becomes this how are you handling what he, what we have uh, what we've been given to handle how are you handling what you've been given to handle here's a point in your notes the first one right out of the chute god gives us cheerfully he gives it to us, gives it to us um, generously, and he gives it gives to us sacrificially. Look at what Jesus says in Mark ten forty five. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. As a follower of Jesus, there's two words, two words that are is used here. Believe is one of them. Prayer is another one. Here's a point in your notes. The word believe is found in the Bible 275 times. Can you believe that? The word believe, it's, it's, it, it shapes our lives. What you and I believe shapes our lives, shapes our decisions, directs our paths. The second word is this, prayer. The Bible says the word prayer or pray, it's found 
371 times in the Bible. Jesus taught us to pray. He said it's important for us to pray because our prayers is what we do to connect with God. That's how we connect with God. We pray and we listen. The word love is found in the Bible 714 times. Wow. Love is in there way more than prayer and believe, isn't it? I mean, it's, it, it's as much as it, those two together, more, more than that. See, we are constantly told that we need to love one another and care for one another and pray for one another. And, and, and so here's one more word. The word give. The word give is found in the Bible 2,162 times. 2,162 times. God talked more about giving in the Bible than anything else he talked about. I mean, he talked so much more about giving, giving of ourselves, giving of our lives, giving to one another, caring for one another. He talked more about that twice as much as all those other important things that God spoke about in the Bible combined, doubled it. It would be still, it'd be still twice as many times. See, here's what's true. If God didn't think it was important to talk about this thing called giving, why would he talk about it so much in the Word? He, he, I, think, I don't think that God ever was trying to take up space. You know what I mean? He spoke whatever he spoke when we read the Bible. When we read the Bible, everything in there, nothing is filler. There's no filler in the Bible. It's all there to teach us something. It's there for a reason. See, giving is not something that you um, um, tack on to your Christian walk. That's not what God is calling us to do as Christ followers. Today in our last message, I want to say to you that you're going to really have an opportunity uh, to get mad at me today. Because it's the last, as a, as a church, I think everyone here and those of you who have watched us for years and years know we're not a church that talks about money very much. We don't ever have messages on money. But when we do, we have to speak what God says. And so we're going to do that, and, and the beginning of the year is the time to do it. So congratulations if you're visiting us for the first time. Congratulations, because you get to hear this thing. It, it's, a, it's one of those things, you know, it's just one of those things. Here's what we should know, that, that this business of being givers is the foundation of our Christian walk. It's what wakes us up as Christ followers. It's about being the image of God in every area of our lives. And we have said already in this series that we are image bearers, and God was the ultimate giver. He gave of his son. He, we'll be talking about that when we talk about uh, how he, he was uh, uh, put on the cross and, and died and rose again. We'll be talking about that in April when, it, when we get to that Easter time, you know, Resurrection Day. Here's what you should know. God wants to fill your life with his presence, with his purpose, and the plans he has for your life. When you and I build a foundation that consists of being givers, lovers, prayer people, people who seek his face, then God can take us to new heights. He could, he could bring us to a place where we're doing things we thought we'd never do. That's great. You know what? There's nothing better than that. Can I tell you something? Every time in my life that God has, has done something in my life that I thought I would never do, here's the, here's the thing I love about that. I never take the credit for it because it's all God. Right? We just go, God, it's got to be you because I know it's not me. I can't see me doing that. I can't see me making this decision. 
Look at what it says in Matthew 6, 21. It says this. It's about giving. It says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You see, the, the, the truth of the matter is that, that this business of being givers of our lives connects us to God. You know, God, can I tell you that, I'm going to take a quick drink here. I'll get back on the screen. Um, I'm going to take a quick drink here. Um, can I tell you that God doesn't need anything from us? He owns it all. He's got it all. So why, is he, why, is, why does he press us so much? Why does he do? Like Ron said this morning, every time we needed help from God, we stepped out more and God delivered us. And you think about that, you go, wow, that's, that's amazing how that works. I guess that's why we always say in God we trust. But God has everything. I mean, I've read my Bible, and I think the streets, I read somewhere that the streets were made of gold. That the fences were like pearly. Pearl's nice, you know. I mean, he, one thing I do know for sure, God does not need my money. Because mine does, I don't have any. I don't have money for him. You know, like, he, he, has, he has it all, right? So trust in God. In God we trust. So we write it on our money to remind us that God wants us to trust him in that as well. Deuteronomy 5.7 says this. You shall have no other gods before me. Here's what we want to know. Here's what we should need to know. That when, when we're talking about giving to God, we're talking about putting God first. He doesn't want to be second. Doesn't want to be third. You know, sometimes what I do is we do these things for fun quizzes or something. And I'll say, why don't you make a list of your priorities, things that are important. Put all your bills on a piece of paper. And, and then after you do that, let me know. And then, I, and then what you do is you say, now where was God on that list? Was he about third or fifth? Or is he on the list at all? I mean, is, it, is he anywhere on there? Because God is not looking to be second or third. He says, put me first and I'll make the rest grow. I'll make the rest expand. Deuteronomy 14.23, this, is how, this was a living Bible version of it, and I love the way this read. It says, being this tithe to eat, bring this tithe, sorry, bring this tithe to eat before the Lord your God at the place he shall choose as his sanctuary. This applies to your tithe of grain, your new wine, the Olive oil, olive oil, olive oil. And the firstborn of your flock and herds. And then I underline this. I don't know if I did that in your notes or not. But uh, the purpose of the tithe is to teach you always to put God first in your life. The purpose of the tithe. Now, that word tithe represents another word and it's called a tenth. Tithe equals a tenth. It's a point in your notes. The tithe equals the first tenth. So I'm supposed to give like the first tenth of what I make to the Lord. I, can anybody really do that? I mean, I don't know about you, but sometimes it's pretty close at the end of the month. I don't even have any money left over. I, I'd rather give to God at the end. When after I've paid everything and I've done everything, and God says, I, I don't want to be at the end. I want to be, uh, uh, Andy, I want to be first. Put me first. And see what happens. 
Proverbs 3, 9 says this. Honor the Lord with your wealth and the first fruit of all of your crops. You see, the Bible shows us that God cares. He cares about being first place in your life. He wants to be first place because he wants you to see putting him first, he does the rest. He, he makes things happen. He, he, Exodus 20, 2 through 3 says this. I'm the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You know, we're pretty good nowadays. We don't build idols too many. We don't have a lot of that stuff. But you know, sometimes what happens is we make other people and things idols. We have a way of, you know, sometimes I look at my bank account and I, if I'm not thinking, I could think that that's the thing that I could count on. When I have to say, the thing I could count on is God. Not what much you... Listen, anybody have stocks? I won't bring it up. I won't bring it up because that's what happens. You know, that's what happens. We get this. We get these things and we think, okay, this is my source. Okay, how much do I have? What can I do? This is my source. And then I have to say, wait a minute. This is not my source. God is my source. Matthew 6, 33 says this, but seek, seek first his kingdom, and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. In Acts chapter 20, God says the first day of the week is holy. Holy means it's been set apart for him. It's set apart for God. You see, here's the point. God wants your time, he wants your talents, and he wants your treasures. And God just wants you to know, look, trust me in this. Here's a point in your notes. The tithe is really about trust. It's not about finances. It's about faith. Because it doesn't take faith to give God our leftovers. You know, I, I, years ago we had a, a sweet lady that went to church here. And little old lady. And she says, Pastor Andy... Would, would you come would you come over my house for dinner and i said well sure i'd love to i'd love to come to your house and spend time she goes now here's the thing uh, we're just having leftovers we're just having leftovers and if you don't come uh, i'm just going to feed it to the dog <laughs> and i'm like oh you're giving me dog food I didn't say that, and I, she didn't mean it that way. And it was very good, too. The food was very good. She's, she's, she's home with the Lord now, this little old lady. But, but the, the funny thing is, is that sometimes we think, man, you know, God wants us to give our first and not what's left over. So, what, so what's the deal? What's the deal? See, Here's a point in your notes. I don't know if I said this, so I'll say it again. Uh, it takes faith to put God first in your life. It really does. So why do we have problems when it comes to tithing sometimes? Why do we, why do we battle that sometimes? You see, why does God say the tenth of everything? Well, I, I was thinking about how do I how do I show this? How do I talk about this? And so I came up with kind of a lame uh, a, a lame example, but I want to take a minute and show you this, because here's how it works. So you know, uh, God says, "Look, I I want you to give uh, ten percent of your time." See, so so God says, "Look here, give me." Give me like 10% of your time. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? Two, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine. God says, give me this and I'll give you that. That will just last. You can have all of that. You can do what, what, what you want. Let God lead you. Let me lead you. I'll give you more. You know, but th- I want the first. And then he says, he says, uh, I'd, I'd like, um, that's your time. I'd like you to give 10% at least of your talent. And so, so God says, look, here, just give me, give me just a little bit of your talent. And man, you could like use that talent. Look at that. Like, like God wants just like 10% of your talent, of your time. And then, and then he says, this is the part, thank you, Jesus, that it stayed like this. Uh, he says, I want like just 10% of your treasures. And, and God says, you can, have, you can have the rest. You can have all of that. You can ha- have his, look at that. You can have all of that. Look at that, all of that. Oh, look, look, you can't even, But yet, you know what happens? We look at this. We look at this and we go, I don't know if I can do this. And God says, trust me in this and I'll give it to you pouring out till overflowing until you can't do any more with it. More than you can ask or think. See, friends, look at the difference between that and that. So why do we focus on that? Because, because here's the deal. We're not trusting God completely. We're not trusting God completely. You know, it's really funny. We talk about the tenth, and and the, do you know um, the tenth in the Bible is about testing. It's the word. It's the number for testing. See, uh, yeah, do you know how many plagues there are on Egypt? How many do you think? Ten. Ten plagues. When Moses came, ten plagues. Right? And he so, said, so, wow. It was a test. Ten plagues. How many commandments did God give Moses? Ten. He gave him ten commandments. I mean, you, ten. It was a test. Right? Uh, uh, how many times did God test the Israelites in the wilderness? Ten times. I'll give you the answer to that one. Ten times. He did it ten times. How many disciples were there? Twelve. Okay, just testing you. I wanted to make sure you were with me. I wanted to just make sure you were with me there. Okay, good. Yeah, that has nothing to do with anything. There's a story in Matthew about 10 virgins that or or five virgins that were were had wisdom and five that were foolish ones with the oil ones without the oil ones that were ready ones that were not ready five and five there was 10 10 see i'm going to trust god and give him a tenth and not hold on to that measly little thing. And God can do all of the rest. And I'm going to trust him in that. You know, I, I saw, a, a, I, I told this to a child that Shirley was teaching one time. We had a, a kid's Bible, you know, she taught kid's Bible study. And, and uh, I told this story. And this little boy in the, in the class goes, I got a question. And I says, well, what's your question? How come God only wants tenth, a tenth and he gives us all the rest? I went, can you come up in front of the church and talk to everybody? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Seeing it from the eyes of a child, you would just think, well, that's right. That's right. That's how it's supposed to be. Here's the second truth about the word of God concerning this. The tithe is timeless. It's timeless. 
Now, here, here's, the, here's the thing. If you're one of these people, I'm not making fun of you. I'm just saying this. Okay. Um, well, Pastor Andy, you have to know that the tithe was under the law and there's a new under Jesus and the tithe is not in place anymore. And so, uh, so here's what I can tell you about the tithe. The tithe happened, 10%, the giving, happened 400 years before Moses was given the law. It wasn't under the law because the law came out 400 years after Abraham tithed, tithed to the priest. He tithed to this priest, Melchiz uh, well, Melchizedek. There you go. It's hard for me to say that, but Melchizedek. Melchizedek went into the battle. He came out. Abraham blessed him with 10% gratuity or whatever, gratitude, thankfulness. And, you know, they say that there's a correlation there between what Abraham was trying to teach us and what we're supposed to do with God, giving the 10%. So tithing is found 41 times in the Bible. Am I still on? Can you hear me? Yeah. Good, good. Gene didn't shut me off back there or anything. No, okay, good. Matthew 23, 23 says this. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your, of your spices, mints, dill, cumin. But you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting what? The former. Jesus says, you should have done these other things and not neglected the tithing, the giving part. There's nothing wrong with the giving part. That's what you're supposed to do. But you should have done these other things as well. See, it wasn't Jesus saying, okay, you're out of that. You don't have to do it anymore. Congratulations, it's over. See, tithing is something that's timeless. It's the same thing that we say about everything. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his word is the same. Here's the third thing. The tithe is holy. Holy. That word holy is a word that means set apart for God. Or set apart. People... Uh, uh, they go to church, you're here to this morning, you've set this time apart for God. You, you've, you've made it special for Him. In the book of Malachi, God is talking to His people as they're departing and they're going on their own ways. And He calls them all back. And here's what He says. Malachi 3, verses 8 through 10. Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are, how are we robbing you in tithes and offerings? You are under a curse. Your whole nation, because you're robbing me. Bring the whole, the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be found in my house. Test me. There may be food in, in, in my, sorry, might be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessings that it will not, it will not be room enough for it to store it. You see, the people hearing this understand the story about floodgates because Noah wasn't that long ago that the floodgates opened up and everything was flooded out. God says, I'll, I'll flood it out. I'll overflow it. Look at that. 
there will be something left at the end, I promise you. But you see how that, isn't that cool? Isn't that cool if you're thinking about, if you're thinking about like, If you're thinking about like my finances or or the time I have, nobody ever has time. We're all out of time all the time, right? And and yet, you know, uh, I'm I'm pretty popular for saying I really don't have a lot of time. But everything I ever need to get done, God gives me the time to get it done. You know, and as far as talent goes, I don't have very much of it. I don't have any of it. You see, whatever talents I have, it's not on me. It's on the Lord. And the same thing is true for you. And I find myself standing in front of you and people all over the country, people all over the world watching us. And it's a little nerve-wracking because, friends, we're not going to say stuff that you just want to hear. We're going to say stuff that God says. And so I want you to understand today that this principle is not a way of getting anything from you. Don't, don't give anything to this place. doesn't matter. It's about you stepping out and trusting God in your life and see what God does with it. We would rejoice in that. We will rejoice in that. See, Today, some people might be watching and, and you, you might be thinking, well, I hear what he says, but I don't know how it's going to happen. And, and, and God says, just trust me. So for some of you watching today, you might just be there going, okay, how do I even, how do I even start? And the answer is you just do it. You know how to start. Put God first. Make out your list. Here's how I'm going to spend my time. Here's what I'm going to do with my abilities. And now who here's who's going to receive it first. And make sure God's name is at the top. Friends, listen. It, it, this is a, this, a, as a Christ follower, I'll tell you this. This is the greatest step that you will ever take besides except as your Lord and Savior. Because the reality of it is, this is at the foundation of your whole life and how you're going to live. If you're going to put him first or not. Because he doesn't want to be second. 2 Corinthians 8, 7 says this. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in love, we have, we have kindled in you. See that you also excel in what? In the grace of giving. You see... I want you to know today that when I say this to you, I'm, I'm saying this to you as Pastor Andy because I want every one of us to live the life God has for us to the full. I don't want us to, I don't want us to just get by. I don't want people just getting by. I don't want people wondering, well, maybe I need to do it on my own. See, sometimes we think that, that we're the source of this. And we're not the source of this. God who just has that is the source of this. I tell you this, that I want to do this. And, I'm go and I do this. But I don't want to do this. You see, I want to do this. Because friends, you know, you know something? When I do this, and, I, and you can't outgive God. And the more I can bless things through the name of Jesus, the more I can do, the more I can do, you know what? God's going to do more here. 
because he's going to give that. He's going to give that to you. I'm telling you, this is not a name it and claim it message. This is a trust God and just see what he can do with it. Do you get what I'm saying today? Listen, here's what I want you to know. Please, please, please do not compare yourself to anybody else. Because this is not about how much you give of your time or your talent or treasures. It's about how much you're giving to God. How much you're trusting in God. Are you putting him first? Are you, uh, are you trusting him? So don't compare yourself to someone else. We read that story where the, 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 the widow woman put two cents in. And, and the message was, that was the greatest gift of them all because she gave all she had. So it's not based on how much you give. It's that, what are you doing? What are you doing with what God has given you? So uh, uh, as we start going down on this message here, how much time we got left? 11 minutes. This might be the first time we have a little bit shorter message. <laughs> might be seven minutes instead of 11. Um, So why don't we leave this series this way? Why don't we take one step to grow in the grace that God has given us this week? Why don't we look for opportunities where we could bless someone else in the name of Jesus, where we can help someone else, where we can reach out and care for someone else? Just, you know... Smile at somebody at the grocery store. Help somebody put their groceries in the car. Help someone. And do it in the name of Jesus. Just, just try it. See, for some of you today, you might be in a place where you're saying, you know, I've never really given any money to... And God says, start today. Start today. For some of you, you might say, you know, I've really been kind of giving God my leftovers and I don't want to do that anymore. So you can fix that. These are fixable things. Here's the thing I want to talk about real quick. Maybe you're watching today and you don't even know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Forget about everything I talked about today. Because God wants to give you something. He wants to give you eternal life. He wants you to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. We want to give you a chance to pray that, to ask Jesus to come into your life. Because friends, we don't want to leave a service without giving you that opportunity because that is the first step to eternity. Eternity with God is accepting him as your Lord and Savior. Will you do that today? Let's pray. Will you join me in prayer today? You repeat after me if you'd like to make Jesus the Lord of your life or if you've already done that. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I repent of my sins. I accept you now as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, as the worship team comes up for this last song, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Robert and, and Ron if, if they will go back and, and pray with people back there. And, uh, you, well, hey, we almost made it. We're making it here. Uh, uh, okay, we'll pray for people today, and then we'll close our service and off and running, okay? Um, come on up, uh, worship team. When you're out of Watch out for the potatoes. The Bible says it's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Right. I come before.
for you today. And there's just one thing that I want to say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all you've given to me.
dear Lord, we thank you now for being in our lives, for all you do in our lives. We can never repay you for all that you've done. And so, Lord, accept our praise, our worship, our hearts. We thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks for being here. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, brother.